no, don't beg me. Don't beg. No, not today. Get the behind me setup. I said, don't beg me. I have more important things to talk about in this episode. Why do you always have to? Oh my goodness. You know what? If it's so important to you, we'll talk about it, but just hold on to that right now. What's up, my people? It's your girl, Adiola. Real quick, before we get to call it the worst matter, uh, in case Mr. President is watching, you know, well, it's your girl. <laughs> you know, <laughs> your girl, buddy. let me look here in case you're watching, sir. I heard that you went to Medina on your way to Saudi Arabia for the investment summit. They said that you stop at Hajj in order to pray for Nigeria. Mabu Hari. Ah, Baba. And I cannot be no allergy, Mr. President, in case you're watching. But why are you troubling God? Is what I don't know. It's like you want to give your responsibility to God. I'm not saying that people should not pray for Nigeria. God knows we've been doing that since I was... Actually, they've been doing that before I was born. Knock yourself out. Feel free to pray for Nigeria. But when people that are at the realms of power, people who are supposed to effect changes, are now the ones putting it on God, it gets on my nerves. Eh, allergy, eh, very long. This is the typical Nigeria mindset. Wanting God to fix everything. Why are you the president? Eh, Emily? What well, do you do not let me look you in the eyes? And as a matter of fact, how can God hear your prayers? Eh, Mr. President, the man wants to spend another 21 billion naira. That is 51 million dollars. The man wants to spend that amount of money on the presidential clinic for a 14 bed space. 14, one, four. That is a daylight robbery. Come on, check up. He goes to London to do. He doesn't even do check up at this place. He has never received any treatment at this presidential clinic, but he wants to spend 21 billion naira on it. Uh-uh, the devil is a liar and that is after he claims to have spent 6.4 billion naira on this same presidential clinic just imagine and do not forget that earlier this year they said that they want to build another vvvip wing <laughs> at this vip clinic ah baba this is what we call fifi benny olelenja olelenja don't let me look in the eyes of ogabu arina oh 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 call it do call it do i told you i don't want to talk about this man excuse me one minute where is my father from Quara state we're in Quara state oro thank you very much please move closer exactly when will you guys meet together like family meeting you need to have a meeting you need to have a family meeting so that you can send some delegates to my father because you need to talk to the man because the man is starting to get out of hands because I'm the only one that will tell you the truth. How exactly should we pray for you? The Economist, that's a news agency in London, published an article titled Insurgency, Secessionism, and Banditry Threaten Nigeria. That's it. Too. That's, that is what is giving my father sleepless nights now. <laughs> to the point where my father had to call a press conference in order to counter what the Economist said in the article. The Economist reported that the jihadist threat in the northeast has metastasized and everyone knows that this is totally inaccurate so you can call press conference to argue that the jihadist threat on the northeast has not metastasized ha huh, baba so the economist is saying that the jihadist threat has spread and the man is now saying it's not true the one that pays me the most is that the economist said that the bandits are collecting taxes from people this is not even something new this is something that the nigerian media has been reporting since last year at least i mean why is it that it is when foreign media now say it that it now catches your attention by the way it's not as if the economist made this up do you guys know that people are truly paying taxes to bandits in nigeria as the, this thing has been going on for a long time no be today you don't take you know one farmer last year told the sahara reporters that in his village they pay eight hundred thousand naira as tax for the bandito and then on top of that they pay nine hundred thousand naira as harvest fee before the bandits will allow them to go and harvest and that if you don't pay this bandit sometimes they will just bond your your farm with everything in it he said that even if you pay they will still come to your farm and abduct you they are, they are still kidnapping people and he ended by saying that this full and he men our problem here in zamfara only god can help us and you know when this farmer said this thing was happening other people testified even on twitter people were saying that this is for you for you happening people are paying taxes to bandits in nigeria do you know did you know now saying that bandits have taken over in the northeast that is what is pissing off my father <laughs> sorry alaji just let me handle this nigerians just don't understand I'm the only one that can help. It's not something I'm saying that, oh, there's a, a, a new caliphate. Do you know how many places in, in this country where area boys collect taxes? 
in and there's no bandit there. And there's no terrorism there. I don't want to mention names. Ah, ah, Baba. I like you to real long. Hold on, Ninye. So, ah, Daddy, how are you not even ashamed to say that out loud? Out loud. I don't want to mention names. In many of our cities, they cover their own territory. So, it's not, so what uh, they are writing is not, I mean, it's not, it's not indicative that the bandits have taken over. No. Ah, Nkose. It has finally happened. The village people have finally caught up with my father. Ah, bandits collecting taxes from people, burning down their farms, telling them when they can harvest, when they cannot harvest their own crops. So kidnapping people and killing people does not mean that they've taken over to you. Ah, Baba. I know many areas in Nigeria, both south and north, where, you know, uh, this kind of things, you know, do up. So it's not the same thing. Say as a seal or you need a baby. Please, daddy, answer us if you are in the comment section. I like the So that we will know how to pray. Kale mo bita kodju adu asinu. E yara oro, tori olong, oro people. You see why you need to have a family meeting. E da kon tori olong. E ma wo ba a minera. E don't be looking at the man like this. What else has to happen for you to know that bandits have taken over? E yara oro e da kon mo I know that you are probably not proud of what my father is doing. But seriously, you guys need to do a family meeting. So, <laughs> baba. So you can talk to my father. Anyway, I wanted to talk about something positive. Something uplifting. Something that has been making me jolly jolly and very very happy. In fact, I've been dreaming about flying since I saw this story. I have not slept. <laughs> Before this one interrupted my show. Anyway, now let's talk about the main, the main, go -go, the real issue. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold tight in your seat because I'm about to knock you out. Nigerian Aviation Minister has announced that Nigeria will start manufacturing airplanes by 2023. Okay, okay, yo, as day. <laughs> Jesus. That was what took us to London. And I'm happy to say we discussed the high and the mighty. We discussed with Boeing, with Airbus, we reached some agreements. As in, okay, I'm so sorry, I'm so, so sorry. Let me take it back. Let me take back what I said. Because that is what people are reporting, but that is not how he actually puts it. He didn't actually put it like that. <laughs> He didn't actually put it like that. Okay, so what he said was that we're tired of relying on British Airways, for example, and as well as the Boeing company that manufactures planes. And so he's working on Nigeria partnering with Magnus in order to make training planes, which they will manufacture abroad. These are small planes. They will manufacture abroad and then they will uh, assemble them in Nigeria. And then he also talked about partnering with Boeing uh, itself in order to eventually make commercial planes for Nigeria. That was what took us to London. And I'm happy to say we discussed with the high and the mighty. We discussed with Boeing, with Airbus. We reached some agreements. We discussed with airlines like Qatar and many other airlines. All in preparation to create that needed carrier. And I think that this is wonderful. I think that this is a noble thing to do. I just don't know about doing this before 2023. He actually said 2022 in the video, right? So we are on our way. Timeline, I did say before now, we will have this airline in 2022 by the grace of God. And we will start with the domestic and, you know, escalate into international. Okay, so he, he's talking about having our own airlines by 2022. But before that, he was talking about manufacturing the planes that we would use for our own airlines. A high capacity, wide bodied, multiple aisle airplanes. They are produced by either Boeing or by Airbus. We're discussing we get the best deal for Nigeria and Nigerians. So yes, we are coming strong. And yes, by the grace of God, it will happen. And yes, it will be a proud for the nation and money honor. Although some people will argue that maybe we should start small. Like maybe start with making pencils, for example. Actually, we started making pencils in 2018. Pencils and toothpicks. Yes, I remember. So those two have been taken care of. For those of you that think that we don't make toothpicks in Nigeria, we actually do make toothpicks and pencils. <laughs> Jesus. But back to what I was saying, maybe we can start small, you know, like maybe we can start by having our own airlines once again and also servicing our own planes before rushing to manufacturing planes by 2022. <laughs> God, <laughs> take away, I was laughing. But maybe I'm the only one that feels like that. Honestly, I don't know if I want to enter a made in Nigeria plane by 2022 or 2023. I'm a patriotic Nigerian. <laughs> but when it comes to some things, I like to. <laughs> 
Papa. How can I put this in a diplomatic way? I'm very happy that we want to do this, but I just personally don't know if I want to uh, board a Made in Nigeria <laughs> plane. You know, I will someday, by God's grace, when we get our acts together. But I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. <laughs> for that yet but maybe i'm the only one feeling like that let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section i basically told this story in order to give kudos to my father for aspiring to perspire i think it's a great dream thank you so much sir you guys not don't know much <laughs> i'm sorry you guys not don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real moving on to zimbabwe ladies and gentlemen Actually, we're talking about a Zimbabwean woman in America, making us proud abroad and of course at home. Meet my very own mother, Zimbabweans. If I do not say this name correctly, just forgive your girl, okay? We're talking about Dr. Matifaza Latwayo Davis, a doctor in St. Louis, Missouri, who has been appointed by the mayor as the new director of the Department of Health for the city. Ladies and gentlemen, this would make her the very first black woman to ever be appointed to this position. I am humbled and honored to accept this position, which affords me the opportunity to continue to serve the city that I love, now at the highest level. As in, and she's a Zimbabwean. Look at you, look at you, mommy. Well done, well done to you. Going to the highest position of the medical field and becoming the director, as in, and doesn't she look gorgeous? Of course she is gorgeous, she is beautiful. So, Dr. Matifaza went to Cleveland Clinic Lana College of Medicine and got her master's in public health degree from the Case Western Reserve University before she went to complete her infectious disease fellowship at the Washington University School of Medicine. Wow, what an achievement. So, suffice to say that she knows what she's doing. She has vowed to continue working on improving the lives of HIV victims, improving safety measures around COVID, as well as continuing her work in education in order to make sure that people know the current status of infectious diseases and the latest practices to combat them. Well done, Miss Davis. We are so proud of you. You are an inspiration to all of us here in America and all of us at home, making us proud abroad and at home. Thank you so much, my mother. You guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <music> to Ghana. Actually, this is also a Ghanaian man in the abroad. <laughs> this is a Ghanaian man in the UK. Making us proud at home and abroad. In fact, the man is making waves for inventing headphones that translate about 35 languages in real time. Ladies and gentlemen, please meet 33-year-old Danny Manu, a Ghanaian inventor in the UK. His headphones are called My Manu. I realized communication was, a, you know, it's a key and it's preventing people to express themselves properly, especially when, you know, you aren't busy. When you're in business or you have business partners in different regions honestly i was quite shocked honestly i wasn't expecting such a huge reaction that's incredible a lot of people are actually doing this now you know there are so many airboards that are now translating languages wireless headphones google also has an airboard that translates into different languages i think more than 100 languages but based on reviews on his product the, the build quality as well as the sound quality seem to supersede that of major corporations he didn't use cheap things that's what i'm trying to say and also from from his interviews, he had mentioned that he actually started working on his own project before there was ever a wireless airboard. So that's incredible. And it's wonderful to see an African in the tech industry who is doing even better than a lot of the, the companies. So we're super proud of you, sir. Keep up the good work. You guys are not doing much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> So before I leave, I want you guys to meet a viewer that lives in Australia. That's one of my mothers by the name Anne Odion. She's a physiotherapist by profession, but she also writes songs. And she wants me to tell you guys about one of her songs, which is on her YouTube channel. In fact, I've been getting a lot of inquiries, uh, a lot of ad inquiries about songs lately. So I'll be doing more of this. So for those who are wondering how to advertise on this show, by the way, do not forget this is our ad email. Anyway, my mother is in her 50s and she's still writing songs. I was like, the devil is a liar. That's inspiring. You know, I was like okay mommy I am so proud of this woman she writes songs mostly gospel songs and you know this particular one that she wants us to feature was sung by her brother by the name Felix Ohis Odion and it's like a prayer song we'll be playing some of it briefly but she wants me to let you guys know that if you like the song and you would like to invite her group to sing anywhere in the world really this is the email to contact her the name of her album is God is good by visions of songs that's actually the name of her YouTube channel visions of songs and you know this particular particular song is titled Have Mercy O Lord and the link to the full song will be in the description below so you guys can watch the whole thing but here is an excerpt of the remix. Have mercy, oh Lord. We are 
That's incredible. You can watch the full song by clicking on the link in the description below. But she's not the only one. Like I said, I've been getting a lot of ad inquiries about people that wanted me to feature their songs. And speaking of songs, another of such people is somebody called Minister Sammy. He's also a gospel artist and he's based here in the US and he just released a new song on YouTube called God Alone. And we're going to play an excerpt of that as well. Just like my mother, he's also available for performance if you like what you hear uh, of song. And if you would like to contact him, you can contact him on Instagram, this is his Instagram handle. And now we're going to play an excerpt of his song as well. I can't leave if you leave me alone. I can't move if you leave me You are God, I'm man. You are king, I'm the end that we breathe. I can't move if you leave me I'm so proud of all these people who are living their dreams, the dream of singing, and I'm really, really challenged. I feel like I should also sing as well. Adela, sing something. Hey! <laughs> so, thank you so much for reaching out. All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it right up in here. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot. I uploaded another video about Victor and I's trip to Disneyland, as well as Hollywood Universal Studios. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. I just thought I should let you know that we're uploading videos on the vlog. If you are yet to subscribe to my vlog channel, by the way, ah, I don't be an enemy of progress. Press, press up. At least 5,000 people have subscribed. I'm very grateful to you, the 5,000 people. <laughs> so the link to that vlog is in the description below if you want to see what Hollywood Universal Studio is like. It's really, I was I was blown away. I was like, the devil is a liar. We need this in Nigeria, you know, but I didn't know who to talk to. <laughs> anyway, so the link to that vlog is in the description as well. All right, guys, it's been real, and I'm keeping you right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to my channel, I'm watching you on Plasma TV. Press the subscribe button and the bell button. Until next time, I'm going to see you later. Peace out.